Today's movie is a great example of what I like to call an almost cult film. It's one of those movies that kinda has a following, but not a huge one. Well, who knows, maybe this video will help it get more attention. After all, I've actually had people tell me they bought the movie Things after I reviewed it. What the f*** are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, that was pretty much my reaction too. Cherry 2000 is a 1980s post-apocalyptic sci-fi, action, comedy, hard-to-put-in-one category movie from director Steve DeJarnat, who not only co-wrote the movie Strange Brew, but also directed Miracle Mile, which is another almost cult movie. This one's mainly notable for two reasons. One, it was an early starring role for actress Melanie Griffith, and two, it had a bit of a troubled release history. The movie was filmed in 1985 for an intended release in 1986, Six, but ended up getting delayed several times, not opening until 1988, partly because Orion Pictures had no idea how to market it. And if you guessed the reason it finally did get released is because Melanie Griffith had become a big star in the meantime, yeah, that probably had something to do with it. Once it did get released, it largely faded into obscurity, although home video and cable showings managed to give it a modest following. Hey, the guy who made it co-wrote Strange Brew, and that had a flying dog and Max von Sydow threatening to crush people's heads. So let's see what this one has to offer. Oh, this is promising. The movie opens like a James Bond film directed by Brian De Palma, although the music is pretty un-Bond-like. Hey, Duran Duran made a Bond movie theme. Frankie Goes to Hollywood could have made one too. Anyway, we're now introduced to our main character, Sam Treadwell, a futuristic yuppie who brought some flowers for his girlfriend, Cherry. You hungry? Yeah. I fixed your favorite. Ooh, she made you a romantic dinner of a burger and fries? This girl's a keeper. Do you know that uh, rust is an electrochemical process? Whoa, whoa, slow down there, Casanova. Any more of this smooth oxidation talk and she's gonna slide right off of her chair. And the conversation's about to get even steamier. What do these things have in common? Lightning rods, big newtons, escalators, ballpoint pens, and Vaseline. Uh, they're not all things you're thinking of putting in my ass tonight, are they? Because I draw the line at Fig Newtons. They're all invented by Americans. Oh, well, that would have been my second guess. Damn, things are getting so hot and heavy in here, even the dishwasher's prematurely ejaculating. By the way, I should mention the Cherry here is the same Cherry 2000 mentioned in the title. Wait a second, Cherry 2000? That sounds like a name a robot would have, not a person. <laughs> Well, that's what you get for flooding your sex robot, Sam. Didn't you read the user's manual? By the way, just be glad this didn't happen when you had your dick inside her. That could have been really bad. So, yeah, this is a future where some men choose to get robot girlfriends instead of the real thing. And by future, I mean 2017, since that's when this takes place. All right, 2017 was a little early to predict guys would be getting AI girlfriends, but... We're getting there. Sam is told Cherry can't be repaired, and because they don't make that model anymore, he can't get another one. I know how it is. You like me. You're a romantic. I guess that's one way to describe a guy who fucks robots. Look, I can't repair your sex bot, but I can give you a loner. We got Robbie, Gort, and BB-8. BB stands for Big Black, and the 8 stands for... Well, you can probably guess what that stands for. I joke, but he actually is looking for a new sex bot. Unfortunately, Sam can't forget his old AI girlfriend and doesn't even think about getting a real one. Again, 2017 was a little off from that. Not much, though. So far, this movie looks like Brazil if it was somehow even more 80s. To help cheer him up, Sam's friends invite him for a night on the town at the... Clue Clue Club? Glue Glue Glub? We're heading for the Glue Glue Club. All right, well, the first letter of all these words looks the same. It's confusing. Well, Sam should be able to find a date here. He can hook up with a woman cosplaying as the Spider-Man villain, The Spot. Hi. This is me and Steve. I think that's Steve. Oh, wow, that's really cool he had sex with some other guy and then recorded it. Anyway, you want to be my girlfriend? However, someone who looks like the sluttiest member of Jim and the Holograms isn't really Sam's type. 
And hey, wait a second, is that Lawrence Fishburn? Oh wait, never mind, I guess it's some guy called Larry Fishburn. Must be the same one that was in Dream Warriors. Let's see, talking about a standard one night arrangement, right? I guess. Oh yeah, another thing about this future, if you want to hook up, you first need to sign a contract made by a consent lawyer. And I know I keep saying this, but... Yeah, we'll probably get there eventually. Meanwhile, Sam's had enough and goes home. He's going full MGTOW buffer. That's men going their own way by fucking a robot. However, Sam's told that out in the desert there's an old warehouse that might have the model he's looking for, and if he puts Cherry's memory chip in it, he'll have her back. But because areas outside of cities are dangerous, he'll need to hire a tracker to take him to it. That's right, Sam would rather risk his life going across a post-apocalyptic wasteland than try dating a real woman. Woman. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen. Look, Sam, it's 2017. Just go on the internet and jerk off like everybody else. And there's a tracker bar out of Glory Hole. Uh-huh. And, uh, what exactly do I have to do to find this tracker in Glory Hole? Drive out there. Find yourself a tracker named Johnson. Yeah, that's not making me feel better. While traveling out in the wasteland, Sam makes a stop at the Glory Hole Hotel. Word of advice, be careful using the bathrooms here. I gotta admit, this movie does have some quirky little touches that I like. For example, why is there a cat in a water cooler tank? And hey, look, it's B-movie tough guy Robert Zadar. And he's playing a guy who looks like he really belongs in a place called Glory Hole. Jeez, this hotel is full of weird touches. For for example, I think somebody stuffed and mounted Pac-Man in Sam's room. Now he's a ghost. Okay, time for Sam to find his tracker, E. Johnson. I'm E. Johnson. I can't believe it. It's a lady. Yep, that's Melanie Griffith as E. Johnson. The E stands for, eh, I'll already be famous by the time this movie comes out. However, Sam doesn't want a female tracker, probably because she'll make fun of him when she learns he wants a new sex bot. So instead, he goes to find one in the most 80s Wild West saloon ever. I'm looking for a tracker. A guy named Six Finger Jake. Lester caught him out in Zone 7 and cut off his hands. Okay, so where can I find No Finger Jake, then? This whole place reminds me of the Star Wars Cantina if it was in Blade Runner. Speaking of which, don't go to Brian James, he's probably a bad guy. My, my. Is that a cherry? Cherry 2000. Vavu? I'm a sex box 360 man myself, but... To each their own. Oh, and what a surprise, Brian James is actually a bad guy. Look, Sam, maybe you should just get another sex bot. I hear they have ones now that also double as Roombas. Sam gets away and decides to hire Johnson as his tracker. That makes sense. She is the most famous actor in this, other than maybe Larry. You just sit there and don't touch anything. I will say, I do kind of like the look of this movie. Yeah, there are some of the standard Mad Max post-apocalyptic influences, but parts of this can almost pass for an 80s low-budget Borderlands movie. Well, actually, never mind. Then they just spend the whole movie collecting money to upgrade their guns. Okay, so where do they gotta go? Okay, we're about right here. And the robot graveyard is over here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Robo graveyard? Listen, lady, I may be a freak, but I am not into robo-necrophilia, okay? Time for a bit of trivia. This movie was shot on location in various places around Nevada, and there are some pretty cool locations here. Parts of it actually do look like a post-apocalyptic wasteland, which, now that I think about it, is probably not the best state slogan for Nevada. And see if you can guess what happens next. Just kidding, he's fine. Although they are apparently in danger. It's Lester. Who's Lester? He's Tim Thomerson, that's who. Dude was in Trancers. And also a bunch of other movies I'll probably talk about on this show someday. Lester is a pseudo-cult leader who leads a band of hedonistic swinger yuppies out in the desert. He also guards over the zone and doesn't like trackers, so they'll have to be careful. What is that? It's a crane. It's a crane. Hey, I'm being the smartass here, okay, Melanie? While this movie isn't exactly an action flick, it does have a couple of pretty inventive action set pieces. Like this part where Sam and Johnson get into a shootout with Lester's goons after their car's been picked up by the crane's magnet. I could kind of see something like this appearing in a really awesome Italian Mad Max ripoff. One thing's for sure, Melanie Griffith's stunt double's working overtime here. And again, there is some pretty cool location work. Not a lot of movies film car stunts at the Hoover Dam. It's a lot less cliche than that viaduct in Los Angeles they always use in movies. Okay, Treadwell, end the line. 
right. Oh, so this is still a future where Vegas tried to rebrand itself as family-friendly by adding water slides. Oh well, I guess there needed to be something for miners to do. Uh, come on, miner! I had to do it! Once again, I do kind of like the future world presented here that's heavily based on recycling and repurposing old items. All in all, I wouldn't mind living in a place like this. Although I will admit, the snacks in this place could be a little better. And hey, wait a second, I'm beginning to think this guy might be No Finger Jake. And he still has six fingers! Well, what if I am? I just heard a lot about you. Like what? Oh, I heard you were in the Wild Bunch, that's pretty cool. It's going into the yard to get one of those sex robots for Sam. His old one broke down from overexertion, it sounds like. Wasn't like that. Hey, I did not overexert my sex robot. Matter of fact, I left her very unsatisfied. That sounded a lot better in my head. Johnson tells Sam that he shouldn't date robots, but he doesn't listen. Well, I guess I never saw that one episode of Futurama. Don't date robots! Maybe I know what you mean, Speed. You're a dreamer. But there's a lot more to love than hot worry. Yeah, but I don't have to pay for all her meals since robots don't eat. I don't have to pretend to like Taylor Swift or wait until my birthday to get a Blumpkin. It's just easier, you know? But wait a second. If I didn't know any better, I'd say Sam's starting to fall for E. That makes sense. He does kind of look like Don Johnson, after all. That night, they got ambushed by Lester's goons again. Well, they fought him off last time. They should be okay here. Not to worry, Sam, you're alive. Either that or you died and went to a water park designed by Bo Welch. And I think Sam really is Don Johnson now. Elaine? Is that you? Oh great, his ex-girlfriend's there too. This would be a lot better if he had his sex bot with him to make her jealous. This is Lester's commune, Sky Ranch, a place where not wearing pastels is punishable by death. Elaine, I told you I was with someone. Can't I you understand? I said I changed my name. Can't you listen when I talk to you? Well, I'm not your boyfriend anymore, which means no, I don't have to do that. We finally see more of Tim Thomerson as Lester, and he is really entertaining here. Usually he plays gruff, tough guys, so it's nice to see him in a goofier, more flamboyant role. Said he was headed for Elko, but he got lost. See you later. He's like that one uncle where you're not really sure what he does for a living and he always has a new girlfriend that's too young for him. You know the one I'm talking about. Do you work out? No. We should. You got the frame for it. Trim. Gotta watch what you eat, though. Yeah, you hear that, Sam? No more eating like the world's oldest 12-year-old. Okay, you've been kidnapped and brought to a place whose flag probably has an upside-down pineapple on it, but this place doesn't seem that bad. And apparently Lester's a fan of Cherry 2000s, too. Cherry 2000. We'll get one of these fired up. It's like slamming an octopus. <laughs> <laughs> and to answer your next question, yes, I have fucked an octopus before. Okay, after dinner they're gonna play some games. First up, it's pin the bullet on the jackass. And here's a twist, they're using the special Ted Nugent edition. <laughs> I hate this game. Can't we just play Naked Twister? Or you could just do that. Well, one of the upsides to being held prisoner in a psycho swingers commune, you get to swing. Les really likes you, Sam. That's not what I had in mind. All right, time for Sam to get the hell out of here and get himself some new robo poon tang. <gasps> oh, the shit. There's a riot right there, see? <clears throat> That's for Samurai Cop, you piece of shit. And hey look, Johnson and Jake are back. That's convenient. Before they get out of there, Sam blows up some beehives that Lester has for some apparent reason, causing him to get stung in the face. And he looks... Eh, not that much different, actually. However, Sam thinks that he lost Cherry's memory chip, which means he can't put her personality into a new body. What the hell is he gonna do now? Oh. Uh. Okay. That works, I guess. But hang on, turns out E has Cherry's memory chip. Hi, honey. <laughs> uh, I wasn't cheating, babe, I swear. I'm just trying to get you a new body. You lied to me. You say a lot of things about Cherry, but she never lied. I told you I wanted a new sex bot. 
We don't find when we can continue this, though. Okay, so after dealing with more Lester's goons, Sam and Ego meet up with a guy called Snappy Tom, who apparently runs a gas station slash brothel. Why do I get the feeling that's something that really exists in Nevada? And wait, Harry Carey Jr.? What, is this desert populated exclusively by grizzled character actors? Tom seems like another weird uncle with a too young girlfriend, mainly because he actually has one. Yeah, well, Randa here is gonna fix us some lunch, ain't you, Randa? No. Well, then you can just go shit in your hat. Yeah, they fight a lot, but the makeup sex is incredible. And also pretty gross. Apparently they're not able to drive to the place where Sam can pop his cherry again, which means they have to fix an old plane. Oh, and here's a surprise. Turns out these two are actually in cahoots with Lester, which, honestly, Sam and E should have figured that out just by looking at him. You afraid to die on speed? Well, I know you definitely should be. <laughs> See? Told ya. Look, fellas, from now on, just assume everyone in this desert is really a weird psycho swinger. I mean, that's kinda how it is now. Sam and Johnson manage to get away, and Lester is not happy about that. I don't like what I feel. I, uh, I feel anger. I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing anger, Snappy. Yeah, don't make Tim Thomerson angry. You wouldn't like him when he's angry. You need to work on your personality. Again, what I tell you. So apparently the robot graveyard is somewhere in the ruins of Las Vegas. Even if the effects aren't exactly top notch, I still like the post-apocalyptic future shown here. I already mentioned Borderlands, but now this part almost looks like it's straight out of a Fallout game. All right, time to find a new cherry model and maybe see a Penn and Teller show while we're in town. Actually, they might want to hurry. Lester just caught up to him. Ringo, Squid, Keys. Damn it, Lester, you can have a key party later. Jeez, this place looks more like a robo morgue than a robo graveyard. Okay, let's see. Lisa Ann, Christy Mack, Brandy Love. Ah, Cherry 2000. Okay, time to bring her back. Hi, honey. Oh, babe, I missed you. I was tired of having to put your memory disc in my PSP to jerk off. Well, Sam got his cherry back. Now they just need to get out of here while avoiding Lester and his band of Miami Connection rejects. There is a nice touch where because Cherry's only programmed to be a good housewife, she's not able to properly react to what's happening around her. Honey, I'd really rather be watching this on television. It's 2017. Most people are probably watching this on the internet. And they can't leave without saying goodbye to Lester. <laughs> Damn, looks like Lester's gone to that big Jimmy Buffett concert in the sky. Nah, just kidding. It'll take more than a few bullets to kill Tim Thomerson. They try to take off, but are too heavy, so E jumps out so Sam can escape with Cherry. Enjoy your sex bot, bye. Ah, but Sam can't just leave her. She is a future Oscar nominee after all. Cherry, I want you to give me a Pepsi. Sure. You know, for a movie called Cherry 2000, Cherry sure ain't in it that much. As soon as Sam finds her again, he almost immediately ditches her. Oh well, at least Sam finally found a woman who loves him. And all it took was nearly getting killed by some bad guys from a canon movie. But wait, what about Lester? <laughs> well that wasn't smart. Damn, death by boobs. Which, weirdly enough, is not the first time that's happened on this show. Oh, and I guess Cherry's just part of the commune now. Eh, something tells me she'll fit right in. Pretty. And so, having found true love, Sam goes back home with E. They broke up three months later. Like I mentioned earlier, Cherry 2000 sat on the shelf for two years before getting released, and even when it did finally come out, it only got a limited theatrical release where it made $14,000 against a $10 million budget. Melanie Griffith also called it her least favorite movie she's been in. Okay, it's not the worst thing you've ever done, Melanie. I mean, you were in Bonfire of the Vanities. Since then, though, it's managed to get a bit of a cult following, although not a huge one. Part of the reason could be that this is a movie that's very hard to classify. Is it a post-apocalyptic action movie? A sci-fi satire? A romantic comedy? It's kinda all those things, which works both for and against it. It's hard to describe, which can put some people off, but that also gives it some extra personality. This movie has a certain quiet charm to it. It's not something that'll blow you away or anything, but stuff like Tim Thomerson's performance and some of the world building here are fun. It does get a little predictable towards the end, but not enough to ruin the whole thing. 
And the theme of people preferring artificial intelligence over real relationships is getting surprisingly more relevant as time goes on. But this movie proves that you shouldn't prefer sex bots over real women, because they can short out if they get water on them, and that could be really bad if your dick is inside when that happens. Well, it's all for now. Until next time. There's unauthorized bread. Waste them. I can't wait anymore. Uh, Randa, I do like your personality.